I'd like to start out. It seems like we have everyone in our um, that was in the waiting room that is now part of the Zoom. And thank you for joining us on this uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, my name is Dan Ludrickson. I'm coming to you from Hersey High School, and this is our new redesigned lab. Maybe I can give you a quick little tour of this lab. And, and then and here is the computer portion of it, um, where we, we actually design the parts in our computer lab, and we come back here and we build it. So, you know, I, I have to first say, you know, how blessed we are uh, as uh, a staff member working in District 214. The facility that I just showed you, which is Hersey's, is really no different than the facilities that are in all of our other schools. We are just so lucky to, to have engineers that work, that work in our company uh, around the United States. Uh, and really in pretty much, you know, most all disciplines of engineers, um, you know, from software engineers to cybersecurity engineers, mechanical engineers, optical engineers, system engineer. Um, and then even on the manufacturing side, we have our operation and test engineering disciplines as well, too. So uh, a very broad company of uh, capabilities um, with uh, engineering pedigree and backbone. Uh, and uh, like I say, it's been a, a pleasure of mine. I'm not an engineer by trade or, or a degree. I'm a business person, but really have enjoyed working 18 years at Northrop and uh, with the team. And like I say, the uh, engineering is what we do. That's what makes us unique. And uh, so it's, it's been exciting working with a company like this and the people uh, on a daily basis. Well, I want to thank you for what you do, too. I mean, because your company is so vital to our national security. So thank you for that. Now, within the engineers in which you work with, as you mentioned, you work with so many, where do they primarily go to school? Where, where, where are yeah. you recruiting from? Where, where, where does Northrop get its talented? Yeah, great. Uh, great question, Dan. So, you know, we, we, you know, most of our industry is really based on uh, the coast, right? So there's a big hub for national security out in the DC region, Space Coast out in LA, and then now the, you know, the newer Space Coast coming up in uh, Melbourne, Florida area. Um, so we do a lot of recruiting in those areas, but really we, we, we start at the, you know, really at the elementary school level um, with uh, where we send, you know, from here in the, uh, in the region, uh, our offices are in Rolling Meadows, uh, real close to Rolling Meadows High School. And we send three kids, uh, three students and a teacher every year to space camp. Um, so we start early in the uh, elementary process, engaging kids on STEM um, and teaching them the value of science and technology, engineering and math. Uh, we have a high school program that we call high school innovation um, and a high school internship HIP program. Um, and you know, some of your students, as well as I'm sure you have been participating in robotics competitions, as well as hackathons that are national competitions that Northrop sponsors. But when it comes to this area specifically, uh, you know, we don't focus on a single school, but some of the areas that we certainly do spend a lot of time because of uh, the, the curriculum and the, and the recognition of those courses, Purdue University uh, is a big one that we recruit from. University of Illinois or Banner Chicago uh, is another one. Uh, we actually do some advanced degree partnerships with Northwestern University as well, too. Um, and, you know, like I said, though, but we don't, you know, limit it to just those three, but those are three that we spend some time at. Well, those are three good ones. Um, yeah, I've, I've also had the pleasure of going through Northrop Grumman and Palatine and is just what an operation they have there. So um, with that, let's turn it over to some of our District 214 um, teachers. And please tell me, um, either one of you, um, both Alex or Rich, what, 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 tell me about the career pathway within uh, engineering within District 214. Sure, I can answer that, Dan. Uh, Rich Hyde, uh, teacher of engineering at Hersey High School. I've uh, been teaching now for, uh, goodness, 16 years, I believe. Um, so uh, thanks for having me tonight. Um, but really, the engineering career pathway started, you know, similar to what you said earlier, Dan, out of a necessity of finding engineers and giving them the skills required to become engineers at the next level, typically the university level. So our pathway is really geared toward starting the kids out in a, a design-minded aspect in our introduction courses. Uh, from there, they can take those design aspects and they can then explore more specialized um, coursework. So for example, uh, one of our classes is the computer integrated manufacturing class. Uh, I know Dan spoke to it earlier, but we 
uh, the culmination project in that class, we build a high mileage vehicle. So the kids get to take those design skills that they learned in the intro to engineering design class and really apply them to a real world project where they're again building a uh, high mileage vehicle that they are going to be getting in and driving and testing on a track, uh, the Autobahn Country Club. Uh, outside of the manufacturing class, we offer you know, several other classes that are, are great in preparing our students to, again, enter that next level, that university level. So we have civil engineering and architecture, uh, you know, probably very closely re related to what uh, Catan does that on a daily basis, where we are talking about structures, we're talking about the design of homes and buildings, um, you know, being able to uh, really design from the ground up, or, or in some cases, uh, take something that is existing and remodel it. So that's a civil engineering and architecture class. Then uh, another class would be digital electronics. That class is, is a deep dive into how our devices work. How does the cell phone that everybody carries around in their pocket actually function and, and do the things on a day-to-day -day basis that, uh, that are necessary for us to access the internet or take pictures? Again, that's a digital electronics class. And then uh, last but not least, we have um, the... Um, uh, aerospace engineering class. Okay, so the aerospace engineering is is really focused on you know s s very closely related to what Todd is doing at Northrop Grumman, where we're teaching kids how to design aircraft, and then once we design aircraft and figure out how we can fly in our uh, airspace here, how do we get rockets and things like that through our airspace and out into space, and then how do we allow our uh, our astronauts to survive out there and bring them back safely. So we're talking about all of those different concepts in our engineering pathway. Again, trying to give the kids an overview of multi facets of engineering and uh, try to figure out where their interests lie. As someone who is also in the high schools with Rich, and I actually, me and Rich work together, um, I am just blown away at the level of talent in which the District 214 kids um, come so far in engineering. It really is just, it's shocking what they build and the facilities that we have. So with that, Alex, um, let's say I might not be an engineer. Are there other fields within the technical engineering? I mean, absolutely. Like one of the things, well, hi, I'm Alex West. I'm one of the uh, engineering teachers over here at uh, Wheeling High School. And uh, one of the things that I think that is one of the greatest benefits for the students is that they get that hands-on experience. So even if you're not, you know, set your sights to be engineering, set your, your goals to become an engineer, you still have all that practical experience with things like 3D printing and manufacturing with, you know, working with CNC machines, working with robots. So again, even if you don't go completely through the pathway, I think there's still plenty of valid hands-on experience that you just don't get in any other program that can be applicable to so many other things. I mean, we think about like tooling, right? You know, one of the first things we teach is how to handle a screwdriver, right? You know, that's not something that all of the students are gonna have right off the bat. Just simple tools and simple usage like that is, is just not something that you get outside of this, this program, I think. Um, thank you, um, thank you, Alex. You know, I, I'd like to ask Todd this question, um, what, what are the job opportunities for students leaving engineering? Are, are they strong right now? Or is there opportunities? I mean, are people hiring? And I, and I know that I'm probably, you're only in one company, but it sounds like you have a strong grasp as far as how many engineers you truly work with. Yeah, no, uh, I think engineer is always a profession that's in high demand, um, you know, and especially when you get into this industry, uh, you know, piggybacking on what Rich was talking about, you know, a lot of the things that we do get into the national security space, which uh, come with clearances and classifications, and and the, those are really hard engineers to, to find. So uh, one of the things that we've recently started doing with our college interns is actually putting them in through the clearance process with the government so that by the time they graduate college, they have that clearance and can come start working programs for us right away. That's really helped our pipeline, but it's made us start the process of um, reaching out to students earlier um, in their career, such as, you know, high schools, which is why we've been doing some of the HIP programs, robotics, and cybersecurity challenges. Um, but overall, yes, I think the, uh, you know, engineering is a, a sought-after profession. It's in high demand. Uh, you know, Northrop Grumman is actually getting ready to launch the uh, James Webb Space Telescope, which will be 
a telescope, unlike any other um, engineering uh, system that's ever been deployed, uh, will see 15 times greater than what the Hubble telescope could back into the past um, and expose planets that have never been known. And not only are we doing that engineering work and launching that space vehicle uh, in December of this year, but another big piece of that contract is also to, for Northrop, one of our obligations under that contract is to generate interest in the field of engineering uh, in our schools across the United States, because there are shortage of engineers. Um, and so that shortage of engineers means that we're always, you know, need good engineers coming out of programs like District 214 and some of these local colleges, because uh, it's a sought after demand uh, field. And it's, I... Maybe I'm mistaken, but when I did the tour there, you had to be a natural born citizen of the United States to work for Northrop Grumman, if I remember right. Yeah, it's uh, that's certainly uh, mo most of our roles are like that, and they would state that on the job posting itself. Not all of them, um, but most of them are just based on the work that we do. Um, you, you know, some of them require most of the people at our facilities here in, in this local area about 90% of them do have US clearances um, from a security standpoint, and that security process does require you to have most often a US citizenship. That's awesome. Let's talk about something that parents are always thinking about, pay. What would be roughly the starting pay for an engineer? And I'll open up to both our professionals that are in industry. What would be you know, a roundabout figure? Katan, you want to start or do you want me to go? Go ahead. I mean, I think you got, um, you start and I'll, I'll go afterwards. So, yeah, so I think, it, you know, a lot of it depends on, on, the, uh, on the discipline itself. Uh, you know, so I think, you know, you, you have to look at the disciplines when you start thinking about pay. It all comes down to the supply and demand of the labor resource. Uh, one of the really sought after resources right now in engineering is cybersecurity. Um, so cybersecurity Software engineering is a very sought after field um, that we have at Northrop Grumman. Uh, it's also you know, called information security as well too. Uh, not only is that for like protecting our own systems that we do work on like in our offices, but then also putting in protection measures into the airplanes, the radar systems, the targeting pods and everything else that we were talking about um, that Rich was mentioning. Uh, but overall from a pay standpoint, um, you know, I'd say it's, it's competitive. We look at the local pay rate uh, we look at the demand of the job and, and, you know, more often than not, I'd say most of our engineers start off, you know, uh, you know, well over 50, closer to $75,000, uh, depending on the high demand. And if someone has a security clearance, uh, sometimes that can get closer to 90, $95,000. Thank you. Canton, do you have anything to add towards that? Yeah, I mean, uh, from whatever, I agree with Todd. I mean, it was all depends on the demand. Uh, but I mean, from our architectural engineering standpoint, I mean, we deal with a lot of, uh, we don't deal with a lot of clearance issues. So you don't get paid that much. You're, we're a private entity. So you, you start out around like the architect, like a recent graduate architect would start on somewhere around 50,000 uh, plus benefits. And then structure engineer will start around a little bit higher, like 60, 60, 60 or 70. Um, so those are the range you're looking at. I mean, depending on whatever engineering you do, you're looking at 50 to 75 a year, um, just starting right at the back. And if, if you have an internship, then that has a little bit more value to it. Well, that's outstanding. Um, I do have, I, I really want to um, encourage all of you on the Zoom, if you would like to ask a question, please provide it into the chat. This next question comes from the chat. Can you su suggest specific coursework for freshmen and sophomores? So maybe that's a little bit more towards Rich and um, Alex, but uh, what would be coursework that would be good for uh, also maybe even incoming freshmen? Yes, I can start off, Alex, and then if you want to, uh, you know, chime in, uh, please do so. Um, you know, I would say that if you are looking into doing engineering, you know, uh, a good core of math and science classes is definitely going to help you. But, um, you know, trying to get down into the project lead the way classes is going to be invaluable. You're going to be able to learn those skills of applying those math and science, uh, the math and science knowledge that you would learn in, in those math and science classes to your hands-on environment. Um, you know, there's really no substitute for being able to design something that can actually be manufactured. 
uh, you, you just have to get your hands dirty and get down there and actually do it. You can see that the machines that we have, um, you know, behind Dan here in his video are very representative of all of the machine shops that we have in our high schools. And really the only drawback to actually making something is, is what machines you have at your disposal to make those, uh, those products. So if you have an idea of how to make those products, you're going to be that much better of an engineer moving forward. Well, yeah, and uh, I would like to jump in here too. So freshman and sophomore, right? So this is my second year as a teacher. So I'm effectively a sophomore and I've seen, you know, how we can see how, how this program can kind of grow and how the, the growth kind of happens as the students want to, you know, they, they, they tend to want to succeed, right? And the more that we can kind of throw at them, but I, they do enjoy the challenge, right? I've seen a lot of students that want to rise up to the challenge and want to like actually create something and build something that is going to be, you know, usable and effective and, and whatnot. Um, but the big thing is, right, we start with the introduction to engineering design because that lays that kind of foundation. One of the biggest things we talk about is the design process and how it kind of affects everything going forward. And we actually even use this design process model as a school now um, in terms of like lesson planning and stuff. Like that was one of our big things at our Institute Day uh, last week. And we talk about how the design process can be applied in, in multiple different scenarios, not just an engineer. Well, thank you. Um, I'm also an engineer teacher here and, and certainly the most robust math and science that you can take. But more importantly, I mean, you, you got to get down here in the lab. And now I'm going to put a plug in for District 214. We've recently gone to the block schedule, which has provided more opportunities for students to take these classes, which I think can only benefit our students. So um, we have a question here. Um, what classes do you suggest taking if you're most interested in aerospace engineering? Maybe that'll be a Rich Hyde question because I know that he's um, involved in that. Or uh, Todd, I mean, obviously with Northrop, but uh, maybe uh, Rich, you could um, frame that towards a District 214 lens. Sure. Yeah. Looking at, at what we have to offer in District 214, definitely the aerospace engineering course that we offer through Project Lead the Way would be a great start. Uh, like I said uh, earlier, we, we really start off with, you know, the science and math concepts behind flight and flying an aircraft, again, within our atmosphere. Uh, but then we, we also explore going into space. How, do, how can we get um, you know, rockets to launch successfully and get things into orbit. And then we talk about orbital mechanics and uh, really uh, do some cool work and cool projects gathered around that. Um, but, you know, it, it, like all of engineering, I think physics classes and, uh, you know, your, your very enriched math classes can certainly help as well. One of the nice things about District 214 that may not be offered at other uh, districts around is that we have a dual credit partnership with Lewis University for aerospace engineering. So our students are uh, given the opportunity to speak with Lewis University professors, and in some cases, students, current students at Lewis University to really, um, you know, get a, a better grasp on that next level, that university level, uh, as well as doing coursework closely related to aerospace engineering. Uh, through the uh, uh, Lewis University as well. Thank you, Rich. Yep. Um, we do have another question here. Um, uh, I took intro to engineering my freshman year. I'm taking computer and integrated uh, engineering and I would as a sophomore and I'm interested in becoming a biomed engineer and was wondering what classes I should take next year. Um, to go into this career. So what would be our suggestion as engineering teachers um, for biomed? Probably SIM, which they're already in. Um, you know, I would just stay within the project lead the way fields. Um, I would, because of, of the problem solving that we do go through and the different inventing that we do go through. I think that's that's very important for you to stay within the project lead the way classes, but certainly, you know, being biomed, maybe looking into some of the healthcare pathway classes that might be relevant too, um, might be another suggestion. Um, uh, can I can I chime in, Dan? Please, 
uh, you know, a couple of recommendations that I would give to a biomedical engineer would be uh, maybe digital electronics. I know it's not really geared toward necessarily biomedical engineering, but it's a great course for you to get your feet wet in electronics. And a lot of engineers at the university level are, are exposed to an electronics class or two, um, you know, regardless of the field of engineering that you're going to wind up in. Um, you know, and it might benefit you to explore that. Or my other suggestion would be principles of engineering uh, as well, where it's a, it's more of a physics-based class, not necessarily geared toward chemistry or, or biology. But again, like Dan was saying, it gives you those problem-solving skills uh, in an engineering format. I agree, 100%. Um, this next question um, is for our panelists that are out in industry, um, both uh, Todd and Canton. And uh, do you recommend getting a master's degree in engineering before you start work or offer it uh, or work for a couple of years with a BS engineering? What are the advantages that might be in getting a master's degree? I could chime in that uh, then. So I, I did my master's right out of uh, college. Um, just because the, the economy is downturn, but as doing a master's, uh, as from an engineering student, and I, my recommendation is to get your bachelor's degree. And, and it depends on which engineering you do, okay? I mean, if you do, if you do architecture and engineering in a private and a, and a, and a serving uh, public sector, you need to focus on your licensing, okay? So once you graduate, you wanna get your license. Uh, there are two steps process. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that. But a lot of time what happens is you, you wanna to go to a firm, get the, get the experience that's required, uh, learn the fundamentals and then go back there. And that, that masters will enhance your uh, technical ability. And then also the, one of the benefits is a lot of the firms will pay for your going back to masters. And, and then that will be more beneficial than just going right out of the, right out of the uh, from bachelor to masters. Cause you're, you, you, you're not, you don't you don't have the practical knowledge. That makes sense. I agree with everything uh, Katan just said as well too. I think the you know lots of benefits and waiting. I know the desire for some may be to go early, and I went and got my master's of business, but I you know I think I started two years after school, or two years after I was in the workforce, and it was admittedly early. Um, but you know there's so many benefits of waiting. You have the practical experience, like Katan said. Um, you know, companies will sometimes pay for it, which is a huge added bonus as well, too, uh, like Katan said. And I, I think another one as well is, is there's many uh, individuals I know who wanted to do a career pivot. Um, and it might not be a complete pivot, but maybe instead of, you know, mechanical engineer, they want to get into optical engineering. Um, and sometimes the master's programs is the right educational background. They need to be able to make that pivot within their workforce without having to change employers as well, too. So, uh, lots of benefits, I think, in, in waiting a couple years before you would uh, go embark on the uh, next step of education. Boy, I got uh, quite a few uh, very common questions on this, and I, and I love seeing questions like this. Um, is there an application for Northrop uh, Space Camp opportunities? Um, and, uh, you know, is there opportunities for Project Lead the Way students at Northbrook Grumman um, or any other companies that you might know of? Uh, so so um, Northrop is heavily engaged with District 214 in the, in the neighboring area. Uh, the, the space camp one I mentioned is elementary students and an elementary school teacher. Um, so, I, you know, if you have someone in that area, let us know. But that, that one is for the, uh, for the younger kids that are uh, starting their education. Um, but related to the high school programs, yes, there are. I mean, we, we do look at a lot of partnerships. And, and this is one even being part of this panel conversation with Rich and Alex and Dan and others, um, you know, we're always looking for ways to get more involved with the local schools. Uh, we started some conversations even with the gaming program that was recently started up in District 214, because some of the modeling and simulation for what we do, it's really hard for us to simulate flying uh, Mach 3 and doing a 6G turn on a F-16 aircraft, but you can do that in a gaming environment and you can simulate aircraft movement and atmospherics that you can't do in on a lab up on the roof. Um, and so we're always looking for ways to partner with some of the local schools and we've found some creative ways of doing that. So uh, what I would say is uh, by all means, you know, you could reach out to the teachers. Um, I'm in, as part of the foundation member. I'm engaged with Kathy Wicks and the team 
uh, within District 214. So they know how to get a hold of me. Um, but yeah, we're always looking for um, bringing in the District 214 team um, and students as much as possible. That's outstanding. I, I, I do know that Kathy Wicks, that name that you mentioned, is someone for all of you on the Zoom that you might want to reach out to. She is a resource that does uh, internships and provides external opportunities for the 214 schools um, students. So um, that's one that you might want to look at. Um, I'm sure her information is on our website and uh, they offer some great um, internship possibilities and, and, and so forth. So um, I, I'd like to do a plug here for a little bit of 214. Um, it is shocking as an engineering teacher here at Hersey, how many students have gone on to so many different options and opportunities. Within 214, we have people in the proving grounds of GM working at Ford. Um, last year, we had students um, streaming in um, Zooms from um, SpaceX. Uh, we have a student from Hersey that is working on the satellite program with SpaceX. Um, uh, we have a, I, I had a student in class that received a quarter of a million dollars to drop out of Purdue because he, he came up with a better electric motor that is he's employed through Tesla now. So the opportunities are just endless. And I know, Rich, um, I'm going to throw you on the spot. You recently had a student come in and, and talk to your class, and, and you do all year long. Um, it's one of the things that we ask all of our graduates in 214 is give back. And um, can you share a little bit what that student shared with you? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I had a, a former student that is currently a mechanical engineer at um, Ohio State University. He had many great things to say, but I think one of the things that uh, definitely stood out as a, a step up um, for him was being involved. He was involved in math team, uh, debate team, and, and as well as our robotics uh organization and in class that we offer at all six schools. And those were invaluable experiences. Uh, he said during his presentation that one of the internships that he was able to gain uh, access to uh, this coming summer, uh, he's going to be working with Polaris, a uh, large manufacturer of, of recreational vehicles, uh, ATVs and um, uh, snowmobiles, things of, of that nature. And one of those, one of the reasons that he believes he was chosen for that internship was his work uh, outside of the classroom uh, at, at our D214 schools and all of these wonderful activities that are uh, available for everybody, every student to be able to be a part of. Um, you know, and then he continued that moving forward into the university level and he had a lot of success uh, building what is called a mini Baja car at Ohio State University and again using some of those skills that he learned in our project lead the way classes as well as again those those opportunities such as robotics uh, were invaluable in allowing him to gain that internship experience. Thank you Rich I know that I can speak the same I mean um, you know, the opportunities that 214 provide, and you can put them down on a resume, are hands on, they're real, um, and our technology is second to none, they really are. So with that, I'd like to just open it up to the panel. Is there something that I didn't bring out because we're down to a minute or two that you would like to share that would be important for a high school student to know? I'll start. Uh, thanks everybody for the time and always great to connect with some new teachers in the district. And the only thing I would say is uh, lots of amazing opportunities in the field of engineering. Uh, you heard two of many uh, from Katana myself and the uh, teachers here provided many others. But the only thing I would say is, uh, you know, um, somewhat selfishly is you have one of the most uh, well-known, well-respected engineering companies in Northrop Grumman in your backyard. A lot of people don't know it. Uh, but there are so many opportunities from uh, to do some of the most amazing engineering things that you think you could ever do from undersea to outer space, um, and, and it's right here. And we always are looking for local uh, local team members to uh, bring on. So hopefully, uh, I'll hear from some of you in the future. Yes, yeah, Amy. Thank you for you guys for having us. But uh, uh, one thing I uh, I realize in engineering is 
have a focus, you know, once you decide you want to do engineering, I mean, there's endless opportunity. And if you don't like something, uh, there's always another engineering field that you can do in, in college. So it's not like you're done with it. I mean, you have time to decide, but just be focused. Um, take a lot of math classes, you know, uh, get out there, get, as, as we said, get your hands dirty out there. Um, it's not easy, but it is a challenging field, but uh, um, if you enjoy it, I know you will succeed uh, for sure. So, and, and also reach out to Kathy Wick. I talked to her, she's a great resource, you know, uh, we'll be looking for some of the high school internship over the summer. Um, we want to get involved with the community as much as we can from an architecture and engineering standpoint. We want the student to be, uh, we want student to be succeed in engineering. So we're always there. Um, and she has my information. If you guys want to reach out to her, um, I'm always happy to help out. So we are so lucky to be living in a metro area that has so many different great companies. I know that I'm from an engineering family. My father and my brothers and sisters work for Universal Oil Products, uh, which is UOP and Displains. It's one of the largest engineering firms for oil refineries and everything else. So Alex, I'm going to leave it with you. I have one more question here that just came in. Are there any clubs, extracurricular activities that you would recommend um, for future engineers? Absolutely. Yeah. So BattleBots is probably our, our go-to, right? That's the robotics team. We go through and assemble these robots and we just have them, you know, we just have them fight each other. Basically it's throughout the whole district. Uh, it's probably one of the coolest things I've seen just as a new teacher here it's not an experience you're going to get in a lot of other places. That's definitely one of them. The high mileage car. Um, that's another great experience. It's a lot of hands-on stuff. It's a lot of practical things. Um, but I mean, we just have, we have a bunch of different clubs that, that are, are great for exploring your different passions, you know, and, and if it's something you want to do, just go ahead and do it. That's, I guess that's my biggest piece of advice. I agree. And if you're even thinking about it, um, come to robot rumbles, it'll be in February at Hersey High School. It's free to come to it. Um, and in fact, I just got a, in the chat line, one of our robot students from Hersey wants to partner up with Northrop Grumman on a robot, which I think might be cheating. So we won't be doing that because it seems like we've got some very talented engineers at Northrop Grumman and we wouldn't want to be doing that, but uh, that's an excellent suggestion. So, well, with that, I think this uh, comes to a close. I'd like to thank all of our panelists um, for taking time out of your busy evening to share with high school kids what the opportunities are in 214 in the Chicagoland area. I am very grateful to all of you and uh, thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Have a good night.